we've got to get from August to September. What are we going to look like in September? Well, thanks, Tom. So, so look, I, I do think markets are in this interesting pause, this interesting quiet before you have a lot of incredibly important events that are all arriving in September, October, right? We have uh, an important Fed meeting in September where we think the Fed's going to hike another 50 basis points. We have inflation that's going to be coming down, but we think it's going to be coming down slower than probably the Fed would like. And then you also have a very important earnings season where we think the numbers are going to get reduced further into third quarter earnings. So I, I think at the moment, you know, the market has been getting some relief from the fact that inflation has been a little bit better. Sentiment was was very bearish. You've had some better than expected economic data. But I don't think these issues have been resolved. And we still think that the Fed has more to go and then also will ease policy less next year as they want to stay serious about inflation. Andrew, at times, and I'll say this for you, I think you and the team have unfairly been characterized, described as perma bears. You weren't in 2020, in spring 2020. In fact, you were out front saying, let's buy this market, let's go, let's go, let's go. Can you tell me the difference between now and then? Because for a lot of people, they're conditioned by that experience, Andrew. They just remember people telling them, don't buy this, don't buy this. And then we got 40% down the road off the lows and they realized they'd missed the rally. Andrew, what's the difference between now and then? What are the signals that were triggered then that you said buy that aren't being triggered now? Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Jonathan. So I, I think there are, are a number of really big differences. I think in early 2020, after after that market decline, you had a lot of very early cycle signals. You had very depressed economic data, very depressed sentiment, importantly, very easy monetary policy with very low inflation. Remember, we had that kind of infamous <clears throat> negative number uh, for, traded for a barrel of oil. And, and you had very low valuations or much, much lower valuations, all those things coming together, a lot of things that you usually get kind of around a, around a recession. Now, I, I think as we kind of fast forward to today, I mean, valuations aren't necessarily expensive on, on all asset classes, but they're, they're nowhere near as cheap as they were in early 2020. But I think more importantly, the, the monetary policy backdrop is, is night and day. It's, it's gone from Kind of whatever it takes response to an unprecedented pandemic to you know one of the fastest paces of, of rate hikes that we've seen in the last 30 years in attempting to get in front of some of the highest rates of inflation we've seen in the last 40 years. So I think it's that that resolve from central banks, especially the Fed that we think continues that's one of the big differences. So, Andrew, all of that makes logical sense, and yet we've seen the return of the meme stocks in recent weeks, speculative behavior that we all thought was going to be long gone in an era in which central banks are tightening policy. What kind of signal does that send to you, and how hard do you think the Federal Reserve is going to have to push back against that kind of behavior? Yeah, thanks, Kaylee. So this is a great question. I mean, anytime you're on the more cautious end of the spectrum and you're incorrect about that, I think, as, as we've been over the last couple of weeks, you, you do need to think hard about that thesis and, and if you're missing something. And I, I think if it was a rally that was being you know, led by, by new leadership, cyclical leadership, a sign that you know, we've had the worst of the slowdown behind us and things are going to reaccelerate, I think, I think that would actually be a very encouraging sign. I mean, I think that would be the sign that this really is a mid-cycle slowdown or or we've already had the sell-off off of recession. But I, I think the, the re-emergence of some of the biggest beneficiaries of, of low rates, zero rates, uh, quantitative easing in, in 2020, 2021, that, that doesn't feel like uh, kind of a new cycle starting. That feels a little bit more like shorts being squeezed, uh, investors being fearful of missing out, uh, sentiment maybe not being as depressed as, as we otherwise might like to think. So. I, you know, I also think from a Fed perspective, the Fed has to think about financial conditions and its goal is to tighten financial conditions. And so, again, you know, as we've seen stocks bounce back and as we've seen some of the most speculative areas of the market bounce back, that's that's going against one of the things the Fed is trying to accomplish. So, Andrew, when do we get the wake up call? What's the wake up call look like? What are you anticipating? Is it one speech from Chairman Powell next week in Jackson Hole, Wyoming? Is it the data? What is it? Yeah, so I, I think it's a, it's a number of things I think we need to look out for. And again, I, I do think this upcoming window for markets is, is pretty important. I think if you know if, if worse things are going to happen or if trouble is going to emerge, it's it's going to happen in the next the next two months or it's not going to happen. So I think that trouble would come from inflation not coming down as fast as expected. So the upcoming CPI, especially core CPI, core PCE, 
not declining um, uh, as much as the Fed would like. I think that would push the Fed uh, and push the market to, to remove their rate cut expectations from next year. And, and we like pushing against uh, those rate cut expectations next year. We also like being long the dollar for those reasons. And then it's the earnings data. I mean, this has been something that my colleague Mike Wilson in the US or my colleague Graham Secker in Europe have been very focused on is, is a view that the earnings expectations they think are, are too high. Now, the third quarter is often a relatively weak quarter seasonally for earnings. That's often when companies come out and, and take guidance down. We'll see if that happens again. But our expectation or our concern is that the, the risk of that is, is still elevated and we'd like to get through that third quarter earnings season first.